Ever wonder why you can't start Elden Ring as the guy on the front of the box? Well, actually you can. His name is Vike, he loves drinking respect women juice, and also his brain got melted by Frenzied Flame. But more importantly, you can get his stuff before fighting any major bosses, so it's basically a secret starting class. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch, we're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel, it's the best way to do it since we get to keep most of the money. And of course, remember to subscribe. Such a small percentage are actually subscribed, and choose Choosing to subscribe on this video will really make that algorithm go mad. Hey, speaking of madness. We'll kick things off as a prophet. It's another Dex Faith build. Last week I said that was sapphic behavior. Uh, Vike is just the exception that proves the rule. Kawabunga, get a crafting kit and meet Melina, our maiden. She's a great friend who will level us up. Nothing bad will ever happen to this friendship. I definitely won't have to kill her to beat a space whale later. That awkward moment when you realize that Elden Ring has the same plot as Final Fantasy X. Alex can get busted out of the ground with a thrust from the rear. We're not just using him for his shard this time. The ash of war we're going to be locked into is a trash of war. It's bad. Alex is just cool and I like to help him when I can. There isn't a goal here. I'm just being kind. Time to go to the church for the wine. I didn't know my dad was a secret starting class, then head to the Weeping Peninsula, or at least try to. For whatever reason, the Bridge of Sacrifice has selected me as its offering. On the other side, we meet another maiden. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to her later. Just lots of happy women this playthrough. By the first sacred tier, we get the first piece of Vike's kit, the Flame of Frenzy spell. It's, uh, it'll, it'll be better later. Faith boosting tier will help, and hey, might as well get the other sacred tier while we're in the area. Then another one on the way into Lernia. That's five already. God, we can get those fast. We're here for the lightning spells, but not quite yet. I want to level up a bit by grabbing my pickle and tricking the Knight's Cavalry off a cliff. Simple stuff. 60% of the time, it works every time. We use some of those runes to buy the knight set from the round table hold. Ha, ah, the knight set from the round table hold. The set of the favorite of the round table hold, who will never be corrupted. Okay, time to test that flame of frenzy spell. A big shotgun laser that fires fire out of your eyes. You might think, hey, doesn't that hurt? And you're right. Eventually it'll dry our eyes out so bad we get a proc of madness, so we have to throttle its use. It's also real slow, so uh, even the putrid avatar is able to kill us. Kind of a bummer. But we'll get faster options later and I'm really just testing out the rhythm of this spell. I don't play test these runs beforehand, so, you know, I don't know how slow stuff is until I die using it. Now it's going to do 20% more damage thanks to the Flame Shroud and Cracked tier. We need it for our first real boss, which isn't actually a boss, the random Lindell Knight in Lernia that has the Lightning Prayer Book for some reason. The big shield, his aggression, and the fact that our spell comes out slow, leaves us vulnerable for a while, and can build up madness if we're not careful, make this a miserable fight. But also, like, why is he here? Is there an NPC I missed that says, Hey, if you're interested in the dragon cult, I heard there's a wandering knight making their way from Lindell to Lania. Are there any other soldiers from the royal capital anywhere outside of Altus that this guy's running with? Or did they just realize they didn't put lightning spear anywhere and that was probably not good? Just like, I don't know, drop it in one of the churches next to a sacred tear or something. That would feel better than just some random ass dude who should not be here, but is hanging out by an artist shack in Lernia. Let's get two fingers in a hole quick. Maybe that'll make this better. It sure does. And then we can take the prayer book over to the dog pope for honed bolt. To boost that up, we kill an Erdtree avatar. This one actually goes fine. I've gotten used to how long the spell takes to use. It helps that there are no big poop and pee piles in front of it after it does its big butt slam. It gives us more time to get the spell off that we're not spending moving around to its backside. Never used honed bolt before, so I tested on Smaraga a little bit. Seems fine. Should be good enough for myself. Warp through to Bellum to get another sacred tier at the church then make our way to Sauron's Tower. That's how intense Elden Ring is. Sauron isn't even a boss, it's just like an area hazard. We don't have a lot of mind or vigor yet, so we have to bounce up and down the ladder like we're playing Burger Time, or the Donkey Kong arcade game. That's probably a more popular reference. I'm just more of a Burger Time enjoyer. Sound off in the comments if you're a real burger head. With our flasks drained by the Dark Lord, we just run past Vike the first time to get the grace. It actually goes okay with some honed bolts, but I'm kind of learning the poise damage bolt versus the boy's defense of Vike and his spear. Again, I don't test these runs, 
so you know we learn on the run sometimes we may die but that's a sacrifice i have to be willing to make weirdly we're kind of just getting a sneak peek of the best part of the vike build npc fights since 99 percent of the enemies you're going to fight in a pve playthrough are immune to frenzy it might seem like using a frenzy stick is bad and that's kind of true but it's pretty good against other human enemies after three deaths here we get him caught on some geometry and use the honed bolt to bolt him into oblivion that gives us the spear and despite being a frenzy stick it's also a fire stick and fire is pretty good from the description war spear singed by the blistered fingers used by vike knight of the round table hold like vike himself it's been tormented by the yellow flame of frenzy from within i love the implication that the spear itself is going crazy it's fitting though because after we level this up this spear for sure goes crazy <laughs> First, we need somber stones one, two, and three. I know you can buy one through four from EG, but that's expensive, and I am a cheap date. So we'll go bully a bunch of miners in the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave. We don't have to fight the Crystallion. We're not using any standard smithing weapons. It's just faster to kill it to warp out, especially since we only have to do two big swings to break its stance. Very funny. Then we can grab some better juice before we imagine Vike in Fort Height. For whatever reason, we struggle with the Fort Knight. I honestly just thought the Ash of War would do more to it and i guess i gotta get used to being disappointed by it i kind of explained it but madness is a status effect in elden ring that only affects humans some humans like uh, the fortnite don't count as humans i divide them into two categories those with posture and those with bosture if you can be stance broken you have bosture but you're immune to frenzy if you have posture you can be frenzied but you're immune to stance breaks both fights you fight are immune to both for some reason. Anyway, imagine Vike in Fort Frot. Someone made it clear that it's pronounced Frot, an old Scottish word for dragon. Sorry about that. I'll make sure to be clear about our frotting in future runs. To learn more about the etymology yourself, Google frotting dragons on your work computer. What do you mean by that? Hey, we get to fight an NPC. Look how good this madness is against the Crab Man, and it makes him grab his head, take a big chunk of damage, and we get to hit him for free. Why does it affect him and not Godric's Knights? I don't know. Giving that necklace to Raya will teleport us to Volcano Manor. That Vike sure does have the Riz. Am I right, fellow young people? Am I? Did I use that right? Outside, we duke it out with a hand, but y'all, this game just ain't built for low vigor. Stuff's too aggressive and fast, and he hands us an L. Or I guess, uh, in his case, a pointer finger and a thumb out. Just one more attempt, it'll work better. Fire makes the hand panic, but only once. I don't know why it's only afraid of fire once. I feel like I would be more afraid of fire the second time I was ignited, but I've never been ignited. That's a somber stone four. We can grab the five in Volcano Manor, and a six, but I forgot to, so we had to go back. Back. Here's what I mean when I say the game isn't built for low vigor. The abandoned cave is in Kaled, a mid or early area, depending on how you want to judge it. And a geyser here one shots us in a swamp where you can't run. You're just supposed to have more vigor. Whatever. Clean rots are weak to fire. And even if we can't hit bosture enemies with the frenzy, we can break them down pretty fast. Great spears are in the third highest category for stance damage, along with great swords, curved great swords, and great axes. It's a great category to be in. With those two dead, we get 20% more runes from bosses from the Golden Scarab Talisman. So let's do another putrid avatar. This one in Dragon Barrow is actually worth more than the dragon, but it fights back. Kind of. It's slow and really easy to dodge. As long as you don't get greedy, it's fine. Okay, to be fair, I was only off by like 2 HP while eyeballing it. No longer gonna be a problem though, since we'll take out the big red tree turd and have 38 vigor. It's two levels away from where I want it to be, but close enough that I'm gonna round it up. Nerd juice is great. Finally, a build that's good at fighting NPCs. RIP, Vike, you would have loved Twitter. Just post something like, workers should be paid for their work and a dozen blue checks will try to ride Elon's nuts so hard it kills you. Patches is also free, even if we miss some of those frenzy dives. Just, uh, just pretend you don't see those. Godskin no Noble's thick fat gives him more fire resistance. That's a Pokemon reference, gamers. But we still get that pa 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 pressure applied. Can't stand this god skin guy. We break him down and make him stickier than an apple pie. Did I do that for Noble Presence? No. No one's ever going to use Noble Presence, y'all. Obviously, we're trying to open up the fog door behind him for the dagger talisman, a rune arc, and an albernaric ambush. I thought I was going to get eaten! 
The Somber 7 is the real goal. If the DLC adds a faster Somber 7, I will give Miyazaki my $50 right now. With the Somber 9 and 8 in the Dragon Barrel, we now have a plus 9 spear, and that's gonna pierce the heavens. No, like, really, I can't even talk about Margit. The fight goes so fast. Of course it does. We have a weapon ready for Faramazula, and Margit is scaled to be beatable with the starting gear. I mean, not easy with the starting gear, but bearable. We just kind of skewer him up like a kebab. Maybe our damage is enough to kill the Dragon Barrel Dragon with the Howl of Shapiro. Hero. Let's say, hypothetically, you're going to burn down the Earth Tree. Nah, it's not quite enough. Okay, let's just get a slightly smaller Dragon Barrow Dragon, Grail. Spear is big and hits the face. That's a recipe for success against Grail. Using an ass of war on the bad dragon's mouth isn't a great idea, but I haven't learned how ass this war is. We win anyway. Gostok gets what's coming to him, and speaking of things coming, they should call Godric the Shafted, because we get in deep, not just with the tip of our spear, but we drive it in all the way to the shaft. Hey, phrasing! I know this is gonna go smoothly now, and Godric's great rune will give us a plus five to every stat. The spear scales pretty evenly with dex and faith, with a little strength in there too. So plus five in three different stats, big help. Basically 15 levels of damage. For it on, pro tip, you can start the melee phase early by running up to him on your horse. Then when he's in the melee phase, you can beat him by hitting him a lot with your spear until his health bar drops to zero. Spears are great against bosses on horseback. I learned that playing Civ. There's another finger maiden here and she's great. I love hanging out with finger maidens. New goal, get me a main squeeze. We're gonna go steady with a gal. On the way, we have a couple other suitors. Gilka isn't my type, she's too tall. Not really an issue for me, but her bio says if you're under eight feet tall, do not swipe right. I understand, she's banging her head on every door frame. Ritual Sword Talisman will work great, so the date wasn't a total waste of our time. Our second date is in Caria Manor. Personally, I could barely carry an outhouse. Loretta is a little more of a match than Gilka, but a horse girl and a spear guy, that's never gonna work, like Montagues and Capulets. Xelvis has a bunch of maidens, but first we talk to Ronnie the gang. Creeper gives us a potion. We give it to Gideon. You can poison my daughter. I won't get mad. Offnir, father of the year here. And then Selvis will give us Theralina, our very own finger maiden. Wait, finger maiden? I hardly know her. Damn it, Michael. Pay attention, man. The best way to level up your relationship is to enter Radon's hole. Theralina makes her debut with the Mimic Deer because, let's be honest, it's not gonna do anything. In the Night's Sacred Ground, we get the Great Ghost Glove Wart and a knife for Ronnie. Then we can dip into the Incel River Main. I mean, like, probably shouldn't be here. I was just gonna say it. This guy Am I right? But it's where we can get the rest of the ghost glove wart we need for our maiden. Say hi to Phalanx Demon's Holes on the way. What a champ. That's a maxed out there, Alina. Now we can take her on a date to the royal capital. Oh no, there's a tree sentinel in the way. Good news though, our great spear can stance break him in around three hits. So it's kind of like we didn't even need to fight him. If a boss is immobilized the entire fight, did you really fight a boss? Food for thought. Wow, such a lovely city here. The views, the Erd Tree avatars, the Grave Warden duelists. Have you ever seen a beautiful skyline and wondered, what do the sewers look like? Why? Why? There's stuff down there. Yeah, I mean, man, don't you knock the sewer all kinds of shit the sewer. Down there. Look, there's a free somber stone age just lying next to Shrek. Then another Shrek chases us up a ladder. I'll be real, I'm scared, but it is adorable. Look at his little hands. Sewer Moog might be an issue. He's got 80% fire resistance. But Theralina really starts to shine here. You might assume she's a healer. She kind of is. But her primary role is actually tank. She heals herself up so regularly, she might actually be the bulkiest spirit ash in the game other than like a mimic tier with healing stuff and hey if she can also heal off the chip damage we take with the ritual shield talisman to bring us back to full health to benefit from the ritual sword talisman that's just an added bonus first try against the boss with 80 percent fire resistance god dang okay if we want the frenzied seal in the basement of the sewer, we gotta get grapes. The knight's cavalry here doesn't matter, it's just so fast that we kill it. You know, whatever, who cares. Castle Morn is hiding our real target, Edgar the Revenger. Although, I guess Arena's still alive, so he's Edgar the guy we're gonna kill for a grape. Speaking of Arena, she's going by Hyena now, and can I just say, she's looking hot. But we can make her hotter, with a grape from her dead dad, two more grapes, and heck, why not a third grape? She'll be so full of grapes that she's feeling hot for us. Apparently she wants us to get fingered in a sewer? No other way to interpret that. Okay, the path to our date with the Finger Maiden is blocked by Morgoth. Now that's a guy who could hang out in the Incel River Maid. Imagine fighting Godfrey, but if he was golden. Now, he's not the boss here, Theralina is, because she's 
always tanking aggro and keeping us at tip top health. Real girl boss behavior. Black Knife Assassin is a pushover on the way up to Morgoth. Obviously, this isn't the one we played last week. If we're going to beat Morgoth's incel ass, the best way to do it is to hit him with his worst fear, spending time with not just one woman, but two. Both Melina and Theralina are pumping out the healing, although it's still nice to have Flasks as a backup. He can hit pretty hard and chunk off a lot of our health if he means to. With Vike on DPS duty, Theralina tanking, and Melina on heals, we can't lose. When we win, Melina says she has to die to burn down the Erd tree? I don't want that! No, instead, I'll just die, falling down in the sewer. Hey look, I don't play platformers about guys who run around in pipes in the sewer. What kind of an idiot would make a game about a plumber jumping around a bunch of bottomless pits? Time to find out what Hayata meant about getting fingered in a dirty hole and uh... That wasn't fun at all. I'm just a burn victim now. Hayata wants us to spread that heat, but like, what? No, no, she died? What is happening? This is all bad. And now Melina is mad at us because we signed up with the Frenzied Flame? Why are so many bad things happening to Vike, the round table's favorite boy who should never know suffering? At least we have the Frenzied Flame seal. The worst seal in the game. Well, when a nice guy loses his patience, the devil shivers. Time to enter our jokester era. Well, I'm the joker, baby. For Biden lands, hey, if we're gonna say there isn't a mass violence problem in the US, but rather a mental health crisis, could we like fund mental health treatment a bit more? At least? Oh well, time to start dancing with myself in the mountaintops of the giants. It's Vike on Vike action. If you meet a clone of yourself, apparently this is pretty normal. Just double hand your spear and take turns thrusting each other. We have a little more juice than our doppel Vikers, so we end up winning and get the fingerprint set. Fun fact, it's the exact same weight as the knight set because it's the night set, except it's been burned and fingered. Wait, you can't wear armor when you get frenzy fingered in the sewer. So like, how to get burned? 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 This game map. That'll drive you crazy. Kind of running low on time for this stream, so I decided to invest in my future and go to college. Red Wolf of Radagon only takes one, two, three hits. That's pretty funny. So is Moongrum going mad. The Joker strikes again. Obviously, Rinala is a one cycle for phase one, and we're finished with phase two in less than a minute. From when we started the fight, like including both cycles, it is less than a minute. Absolutely deleted. Really annoying errand here. We can get out of the way for the next stream. Let's hit up the Carrion Study Hall. Carrion a Study Hall? That sounds even harder than trying to carry a manor. Ah! Tip top, we grab the curse mark of death, Sophia's quest is a go. We go to the deep root depths through the finger cave, free rune arcs from the ants, and then we can duke it out with Fia's champs. They all can go mad, so it's pretty free. The AoE just roasts all of them. When it's good, it's really good, but when it's bad, it's worthless. Fire Giant next, and he actually only has like 50% fire resistance. Also, as much as I'm calling this spear a fire weapon, most of its damage is physical, and that stance pressure hits everything super hard. His especially when mixing in the charged attack physic tier with the charged talisman as well. Just like, look at the damage we're getting when we hit that eye. Ooh, that's nice. And that's a dead fire giant. But we're not burning down the Erd tree, not just yet. For whatever reason, I'm not feeling particularly eager to turn myself into kindling. So instead, we'll thrust into the castle's hole and quit out right before the Nile boss fight, so the enemies de-aggro. Theralina gets close to dying, but a minute later, the guards are dead and she's at full health. Heal tank, what a boss. Thought I was close to a stance break, but... Uh, no, and we get punished for our greed. Back at it, we clear out his guards, and he does the pretty easy to avoid super move. We can punish it pretty hard. That's a dead Nile. Now we can go to the Howling Tree. Oh, after we beat an old man with a stick. The Silver Scarab is pretty great for farming the last foul feat we need to make pickles, but if we have to escape, we have to fight a Mimic tier. Remember, thrust no one, not even yourself. Or actually, wait, do thrust yourself. That's what we did, and it felt great. Some great things in the Consecrated Snowfield. Anastia drops a somber stone, and then we beat Ensha because, uh, it's Ensha, hi. If you want to see Anastia or Ensha in a video, there were other options on the Patreon that lost to Vike, so now they lost to Vike twice. Bummer. Before swinging at the Putrid Avatar, I used the Howl of Shapiro. The Earth tree already apologized for persecuting those who live in death. I'm afraid.
And yeah, plus 30% damage stacking with the negative 100% fire resistance make this thing burn down super fast. One thing we really have to do before burning down the Erd Tree is grab the gravel seal from this Lindell Knight. If you make the capital all ashy, he's gone. Technically, that doesn't happen until you fight Malekith, but I was worried I would forget. Now we burn down the Erd Tree ourselves. No handouts here, and more importantly, no maidens were harmed in the making of this run, except, uh, Arena and, uh, Hyetta. It's like not important, like, like they don't matter. I summoned Bernie for the Godskins and having a summoned NPC and a Spirit Ash is so fun. It really feels like you're in a whole adventuring party going up against the bosses. With two tanks and a lot of health, we insta mash the skinny, then off a chunky and a skinny and another chunky. There's so much stuff between the duo and Malekith. I got comboed by a dog man while trying to snipe a dog dog. Then we crushed the swag jump, did the bird run for a free somber stone and finish it off by taking on the draconic Glee Sentinel. He tries to bury me, but I'm not gonna gonna sue anyone at FromSoft for that. Emma and Joy breaking his stance down and we finish him off. I'm betting big that there's a big overlap of Glee fans and Elden Ring fans. Time for the endgame boss rush. Malekith breaks down super fast in phase one. So fast we even get a charge attack off before phase two, so he breaks down just as fast there. I guess I got a little greedy and tried to swag kill him with the ass of war, but it worked out. I've never been punished in my life, except the times I'm punished. Speaking of, Gideon off should be pretty free. We can grab the Frenzy Sniper spell by where we first fought Fike. Frenzy Burst maybe has the longest range of any spell and inflicts madness. Gideon's weak to madness. Makes him totally free if you have enough blue juice. I sure can't wait to drink all these drinks. April Fool's! Oops, I died. Well, I can swing it back with enough blue juice and it makes the fight basically unlosable. Godfrey next, we bring out Theralina, who is healing off whatever chip damage Godfrey is doing to us thanks to Ritual Shield. Weird quirk, you can't get healed while critting though. That kind of stinks. A charge attack leads to a break pretty much as soon as phase two starts. Then we deal enough damage that we can just beat him to death during the transition. Only God left and a bunch of other Remembrance bosses. They're going to put us to the test, but not because they're hard. We just got to run. The fitness gram pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test. Radagon actually goes smoothly, no rust. We just punish the grab whiff and keep on hitting him. He goes for the chunky jumper, so we jump first, then charge attack, and that makes him weak enough that we can break him between the second and third hits of the hammer slammer, then head into the Elden Beast. This is where the fun begins. Uh, no Anakin. This is where the run begins. Honestly think someone at FromSoft was getting high on the madness supply while they designed this boss and didn't give you torrent. You know what's even more maddening? When we get the frenzied ending, Melina is holding the spectral steed whistle and is mad that we killed torrent. So torrent was here or not? Whatever. At least we're getting our steps in. More steps in as we run around lighting some torches in Nakron, then we can fight the regal cinema spirit. Eventually we pop Howl of Shapiro. Hypothetically, if the world were consumed by frenzy flame, would the Tarnish not simply sell their houses and snipe it from across the map with frenzy burst? So Snipers really just help us cut down on the running. After some hugs with Fia, we head into fight 40 sacks with the concussive optic blast. It really helps us hit the head. When it comes to characters from X-Men or the Odyssey, in my personal opinion, nobody beats Cyclops. Now Estelle is harder to snipe because he loves spinning around in his weird space shrimp body. Best to just chase him down and burn those calories. Imagine running a mile in 25 pounds of armor, or uh, 2.5 kilometers in a lot of kilograms. Sorry if you're not American. Vike is all about getting that lean runner's muscle. God, Blasigious Axe was terrible this time. I don't know why it sucks sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. The undodgeable hitboxes are a pretty big part of it. Does every single one of his attacks need to have multiple hitboxes that are disjointed and staggered? I guess like the tail attack doesn't, but the Omega laser combos into itself. That really doesn't seem fair. Eventually I just decide that Vike uses ancient dragon lightning spells. Obviously he has ancient dragon lightning, right? He just didn't equip it for some of the fights. Using the Howl of Shapiro will add even more damage to it. If you have to fight multiple bosses to get the runes you need to survive, you shouldn't have fought a low level rune boss. That's a you problem. And we can finish it off. Wow, Penguin Noble goes mad. We win the NPC fight. Who could have seen that coming? Moog time now. We don't have the Moog tier. I'm sure it'll be fine. Can you believe Vari worships this dude but calls us out for having no maidens? Like, yeah, I guess you could say Moog has a maiden, but if you do, I want to put you on a special list that makes it harder to buy a house. Stance breaks are cool and we have enough flasks to just chug through the phase transition. Then in phase two, we have to run around with all the blood until we find our windows 
chose to win. Tried to use Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike on Rykard, worked for phase one, didn't work for phase two, so uh... Skip it! Wow, this game had the weird glitch where our great spirit started shooting wind blasts. Oh, ooh, so cool, Rykard, good boss. Actual good boss after the liturgical town and Mikola's tree. It's a dying tree and we brought a fire stick. That seems safe. Swag jump too, it's time for Loretta. I do like Loretta. I just wish she had a little more oomph. Spears are also really good against horses and this is a great spear, which means it's great against horses. As we head into LFL, the clean rot knight is really mad. We tried to run past her. Sorry. Then we get locked into a corner by a putrid avatar and die. Oh, and same thing happened again when I was trying to get my runes, so I guess we just don't get those. I don't need any advice for the Rotterfall. Thank you kindly for caring, but I've literally never died here. It's just slow and annoying. Only one boss left, but we have a nice spear dash and a great weapon with fire damage. It's gotta be all we need. We lost? Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to lose. Let me see the script. Yeah, Melania goes pretty bad. Who could have seen that coming? This build really should have everything going for it, but this lady's just kind of hard. I lead with a laser shot. Honestly, should have just stuck with that. The best strategy for fighting Melania is always just to not actually fight her. Well, you struggle with Melania. I just used Blast Feminist Blade or Limbers of Blood or Descript Pattern that consists at least dance breaks. Or like, yeah, that's a way to win the fight, but is it fun? If you're just shutting a boss down enough that you don't have to fight it, just don't fight it. Just like stay home. We're keeping Theraline out. Not because she's healing us, but because she provides us safer windows to attack and will heal herself faster than Melania can kill her. Remember, her job is not keeping me alive. Her job is keeping herself alive. One of our attempts, our foot got stuck on the geometry, so we just got nailed by the onion in the phase two transition. That's pretty funny. All right, so new strategy, but for that, we need new tools. Godefroy will drop the Godfrey icon. He's like Godric, but worse, and we did that fight like six hours ago. That'll give us a 15% damage boost to charge spells like Frenzied Burst, and then we can grab the Radigan icon to spam spells faster. We're just gonna try backing up and shooting, and I hate to say it, folks, it works. I really hate that it works. We're out of mana for phase two, so we die. Try again with a boost to damage from Howl of Shapiro. Remember, your maiden isn't supposed to enjoy leveling you up. My maiden is a medical doctor and said that a maiden enjoying a level up session is an oddity. More damage is good. It's not like we're gonna get hit. In phase two, it's a good thing we worked on our cardio because almost every single attack of Melania's second phase is a gap closer. Also, she runs faster than us. Uh-oh. That means we don't have time to set up our sniper rifle. So, uh, Theralina, go, I choose you, distraction. It does kind of work. Actually, people dunk on spirit ashes for Melania because they kind of turn into a juice box for Melania, which is true. But if they open up gaps to deal more damage than she heals, that's a net gain. Until the ducky dance insta kills them and then you're back to square one okay back for another stream we're just gonna do a different strategy but of course a new strategy requires more errands and more running around i just ignore o'neill's ads he weirdly doesn't stance break whatever okay we win give gowry the needle quit out kill him wait why did we kill him the joker strikes again Sometimes you hit the wrong button. Sometimes that cuts off the quest that you needed for the talisman you really wanted. It's fine. Let's go to Fort Laid. Wild that it took Vike so long to get here. Grab the Fire Scorpion Charm for 12% more damage from fire. Salia Tunnel has a worse version of the talisman I originally wanted. It's a 4% damage boost to incantations rather than 8%. Hopefully that's still enough. And uh, also, I guess, a Falling Star Beast so we can warp out. We still can't warp out. Neat. Somber Stones from Eiji and then we get the Earth Tree Seal because the Frenzied Flame Seal is just dog shit. And if we have it in our offhand, we still get the 20% boost to the Frenzy spells. Finally, we get a messy spray from the yellow anus ruins. Unendurable Frenzy. It's a bunch of face lasers that don't stop till you run out of mana or go mad. First science run goes great. We're dealing more damage with the laser than we were before. But hey, forgot to get the spell. I literally did the whole quest to grab. Whoopsie. Back at it again. We're intentionally going mad a little bit before phase two, since that resets our madness meter and we'll make sure we don't get mad casting Unendurable Frenzy. Here's where I messed up. Unendurable Frenzy has a 22 base cost and six cost per tick after that. I figured ticks were every second, but no, they are way faster. We ran out of mana and died. We can get unlimited mana from the ulcerated tree spirit in Yelmnir. It's pretty fast to melt down since it's a tree boss. It's weak to fire. So back at it. We go into phase two and start unloading on her, but we go mad too fast, which means we need more focus. That stat that helps you stop going mad. We can either respec for more mind, but mind doesn't actually help your focus until you hit level 30. So let's just get the clarifying horn charm plus one. It's a knock run. It'll boost our focus by 140. 
Okay, trying again, we still went mad. So, since we're not planning on getting hit, and we're scripting fight out so Melania just never gets to swing at us, we'll get rid of a bunch of vigor for more mind. Fun fight here. We use the sniper to get to phase two, drink the juice, then use unendurable frenzy until she dies. That's it, that's the end. It wasn't fun, that wasn't interesting, but that's how we beat the final boss. The rest of the run was fun. I don't know, y'all. I just don't like playing this way. I really don't understand why people think scripting fights is fine, but don't like using spirit ashes. This is easier than spirit ashes and less fun, in my opinion. Hey, if you like scripting, that's cool, as long as you're not dunking on other people's playstyles and saying they're less valid. I just see so many people who hate spirit ashes and then say, this game isn't even hard if you script it. Like, what do you mean? What? Anyway, eight hours in 16 minutes, 45 dead bosses and 42 deaths. To be honest, about seven of those were death abuse just to make the running around faster at the end. Bike Spear is cool. It would be cooler if Frenzy affected most enemies. Just give them a debuff or something? I don't know. It's just weird that you give a weapon a mechanic that is pretty much only for PvP. Frenzy spells and lightning spells still go pretty hard in PvE though, and a Great Spear is just good on its own, even with a janky status effect. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. It's where we figure out new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel it's the best way to do it it's where we get to keep most of the money and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video